converted to Islam on the 19th of Ramadan, uh, two Ramadans ago. Um, the journey has been up and down for a variety of reasons, um, but I'm from Canada, so I'm, I've been very blessed to have um, a multicultural background in my friends and my family. And so I think that made me very open to being accepting of um, a new faith. Um, when I grew up, I was Catholic, um, and my grandparents were lovely, um, devoted Catholic, um, spiritually based people <clears throat> who gave a very good example about how to um, be present in faith. And um, over my adult life, I sort of lost touch with um, religion in general um, and then was lucky enough to have um, whisperings from God call me back into um, finding myself in faith again. And after searching both the Bible and other, um, a variety of different religions, um, then I was able to make a, an educated and a very conscious decision to follow Islam. I can't say that I ever had a negative um, image of the Prophet. Um, I was blessed to have um, Muslim friends growing up in grade school here in Canada. Long ago, they were one of the, I mean, it was one of the first Muslim families to come into my area. And she quickly became one of my best friends and, and still is one of my good friends to this day. So learning about the Prophet's family, on the other hand, was eye-opening to me. And to think of, sometimes I, th I reflect on the knowledge that the Prophet had of what was going to happen to his family, and it makes me sad. It makes me think, you know, as a grandfather, knowing what's going to happen to those, to his grandchildren and, and their children. And it, it makes me astonished about his level of peace and his level of compassion and his sheer brilliant and calm nature because for someone to be able to see that far ahead and know what was going to happen and still be willing to forgive and still be willing to um, fight and it just it it's inspiring and it amazes me. I was introduced to um, the stories of Karbala um, first through some videos by um, Sayed uh, Amar Nakhchwani. Um, when I was preparing to um, accept Islam, um, I had a wonderful friend suggest different lectures to look at and um, one of them was um, the stories of Imam Ali. And I, I adore Imam Ali. I think that my entire life I've been seeking justice and so when he was the first um, personality that I was introduced to, I, it, I mean it solidified my faith in, um, in this religion. Now, <laughs> Karbala on the other hand, when I, when I sat through the, the end part of the majlis, I was de devastated. I was, um, I hid in my room and I cried for about two hours um, and it was the story of Qasim and um, I just, it was too visual for me. It was overwhelming to me to think that there would be any human beings who would be so willing to treat um, a child in that manner. It just absolutely broke my heart um, and as a, maybe as a mother, maybe as a teacher, I didn't, I don't know, it just, it made me vi struggle to um, understand humanity. It made me struggle to understand some of the present day arguments and um, that the different sects of Muslim face 
And I mean, you just think if everyone knew these stories, if everyone understood that these are the things that happened, maybe they could put some of those differences aside and hopefully rise above that and not fall back into the same patterns that had happened at Karbala because there's no good reason for that to ever happen. Um, so I was lucky enough to also watch some um, videos by Brother Khalil Jaffer, and um, he, would, he was telling the stories of um, uh, Abbas and, and, of course, um, the final days for um, Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. And it just made me feel. It, it brought back this sense of purpose for me because while I always believed in justice and I always believed in truth, and so I could immediately, um, you know, I could immediately understand um, the teachings of Imam Ali, peace be upon him. When I learned about the stories of Karbala, it gave me a reason to take action. And I think that that was something I was seeking because for him and the group of companions to have that level of courage and to know going in that the outcome, there was going to be no, there was going to be no outcome other than what had happened. And they knew that. They walked into a situation where they knew they would be murdered. And that's a courage that I hope to have someday, to be able to face things head on and not, um, not fear what, what the lasting effect would be on them. It took me um, a little while to tell my extended family. I, I, my mom lives with me, alhamdulillah, so, um, you know, I was a little nervous talking to her. She's Catholic, um, and telling her and my two children was, um, it made me a little bit nervous, but I've been blessed with the most understanding and um, positive family that anyone could ever ask for. And my mom, you know, we only eat halal in the house. We, um, you know, there's no, there's no questioning about what, you know, what, why am I doing this? It's, that's never been a question that's been asked in my home. Um, my children will watch me pray or, um, you know, my youngest daughter has come to um, some of the iftars for Ramadan and enjoyed it. And so we're very open and I've always raised my children to find their own faith as it was anyways. And so they are witnessing their mother do that, find, their own, find her own faith. Um, my extended family, um, I decided to inform them via email, which, <laughs> which for me was the safest way to do it because it's a very big family and I wanted everybody to hear it at the same time. And they were all very positive. I had some of my cousins ask questions and said that they had, um, they had themselves gone on, you know, th they've looked for at different religions to s seek personal satisfaction um, from religion. Um, I have one aunt who only has the best, in, you know, the biggest heart. Um, she questioned, you know, politely and kindly, and you know, we had a conversation about the reasons and not the stereotypes of what she understood from the media. And I think that it brought about an awareness to her. And the fact that they realized that I'm not a different person. I'm the exact same person that I was. I'm just, you know, I'm learning to be a better person every single day by following this religion. Um, and so I think that she appreciates that. And I, you know, I don't force it on them any more than they force, you know, their religious beliefs on me. And we can have very open discussions about things and be very um, respectful of each other. So it's been overall very positive. It is different and it takes a lot, but I think for me, it's the emotional difference. It's when I hear, it doesn't matter if I can fully understand if it's something in Urdu, um, even though I'm not understanding the words, you can feel the grief, you can feel the loss, um, and you are part of this community that is suffering the worst kind of loss, knowing that we have got to, as a community, step up. We have to follow um, the example of um, Imam Hussein and his um, companions. We have to take action and try to teach other people um, 
about what it means and, and the importance of his role on this, on this earth. Um, one of the things um, that had happened during Maharam is that, you know, there's a lot of media scrutiny over um, Azadari and, you know, our pa the passion plays that may be put on. And I know that um, there was a lot of, <clears throat> there was a lot of scrutiny um, done by a certain media group. Um, and a friend had posted it um, on Facebook. And so, you know, I was new to the religion and I was still feeling a little bit shy, but I knew in my heart that I had to do something about that. Um, so I, I messaged her and I, you know, I said, I need you to take that off. I need you to pull that, like erase that post off your Facebook page. And, you know, she questioned it and she wanted to know why. And I said, because you're taking that entirely out of context and you're showing, you know, it was, it was like a, you know, a, a headline of um, local mosque is teaching children um, to, I, th I think it was teaching children to behead. Um, so unfortunately, they had taken the entire Muharram story, the, the Battle of Karbala, and they were turning it around and instead of it being, we are learning about, this is what we're learning about, this horrible thing that happened, they were trying to make it seem like it was um, a manual for teaching or educating children on um, becoming terrorists. And I was so incensed. And so when I spoke to my friend, um, I called her and I explained and, and she said, well, why does it matter to you? I said, well, number one, it matters to me because I, as a human, you need to have the right information out there. I said, but number two, I've also um, accepted Islam and I am a Muslim. And she, and she was shocked and she asked me lots of questions, but also in that moment, she started to say, well, I never really knew that. And I said, no, and, and I appreciate that. I, I don't, didn't think that you were doing it intentionally to be disrespectful, but I really, social media needs to find a way to, um, I don't know, improve the quality of things that get posted on it because it's just, things are taken out of context and there's no way to verify it unless people actually speak up about it. Because I don't necessarily understand the Nohas, um, what I do is I tend to replay my understanding of the stories of the personalities. Um, and I, you know, I try to foster, I try to bring about my grief that way. Um, but sometimes I think about very personal things. I mean, losing my father, um, losing my grandparents, things that everybody can relate to that is an important aspect of really reflecting on these personalities because it's not just about thinking about Imam Hussein, it's about, okay, how does this, how does this play out in our own lives? Um, because all of those personalities are giving us uh, lessons to learn and things to apply to our own lives and we have to, be, we have to constantly be reflecting on that um, so that we can do better for ourselves and we can do better for our community. So the story of Karbala, it reinforces the fact that you don't have to have a majority behind you to be successful. It reinforces that when you are on a path of truth and righteousness, that you can accomplish what you've set out to accomplish. Because Imam Hussein never went to Karbala thinking, oh, I'm gonna defeat this army. <laughs> he went out saying, I'm gonna save Islam. And he did, and he did through his sister, and he did through um, the fourth imam. And so his objective was just to stand up and show people the right way to be. And I, I mean, if you take that and you go with it in your own life, you know that there is something positive that's going to come out of that. And it's important for everybody I mean, everybody should learn the stories of Karbala. One of, the, one of my heartfelt um, commemorations is for Sikena when she lies on her father's chest and I reflect on my own dad and I reflect on what my children go through with myself and with their father. Um, that story is very personal to me. So it is one that is hard for me to listen to, but I force myself to sit there and pay attention and feel that rush of emotion. So that, that for me is a huge point for spiritual personal growth. Um, on the other side, there's Zainab. And 
she is she's the closest thing that I've ever had to an actual hero, somebody that I personally every single day think, you know, if I can take something from her, if I can, you know, if I could choose to behave in a certain way or um, rise above the challenges that I might face in a day, then I'm being true to her. Because, you know, the 14 infallibles, we can't be that. There's no possibility for us to achieve that. But Zainab, we can do that. Every single one of us can do that. We can stand up. We can, you know, we can continue to spread the messages of um, the Elevate, and we can continue to strive and speak out with this level of class and character that, you know, is amazing. And you just think, you know, if I could be that eloquent, if I could be, you know, that intelligent and that brave and, and that caring, I mean, she was caring for her family all while she's standing there being the beacon of hope for our religion. I mean, it's amazing to me. It makes me, you know, makes me want to go and stand up and, and do things. And so, I mean, it, there's certain projects that I've decided to take on because of it, because I think, okay, this is, you know, this is what she might do in this situation, providing food to families who um, need it. And it's done in such a wonderful way that it gets delivered to these people's homes instead of um, forcing them to come to um, one location and feel the shame and embarrassment of having to come and get um, charity, basically. And so we go and deliver it like any kind of grocery delivery service. And um, I think it gives them a much more positive way um, to accept that. So that was one of the things that I was inspired to become part of. Um, and the other is at work. Um, I work at a private school, and so some of the teachers, we've decided that we're going to um, work towards uh, raising funds to um, build a school um, in one of the Middle Eastern countries. I've been lucky to find um, some picture books that I can use to teach my children about um, Islam and to give them an understanding. Um, I've yet to find anything, um, I think, that adequately explains um, the stories of Karbala in a way that they would understand. Um, what I do is I sit with my children and I try to explain um, what's going on. And so they know that Muharram is coming up and that um, it's going to be a little bit quieter for me, um, that I'm more likely to be a little bit more emotional um, during that time. And so when they question um, the reasons for that, then I'll be prepared to talk to them, talk to you know, my two girls about what it means, um, why we're commemorating Muharram for uh, 10 days, and um, you know, the importance of the different personalities from there um, in a more simplistic way so that they can understand. And one of the reasons why we cry um, every year during Ashura um, is because globally the lessons haven't been learned that we cry for the grief that we feel in our communities today of the oppression. And we cry for humanity who still haven't learned <clears throat> all of the lessons about Ashura um, and the strength of um, what Imam Hussein stood for. Um, and I think it's important to keep that grief alive so that we can continue to go out and strive to teach that message. Because if we were complacent about it, if we just, you know, it's just another, it's just another day, um, it would no longer be important. It would no longer carry the same weight. Um, it wouldn't carry the same importance as, you know, there's this feeling when you're crying during Ashura and it's like a wave and it's almost as if there's a point, at least for me, where it almost feels like Allah is reaching down <clears throat> and patting you or comforting you because he can, you know, because the grief is so intense. 
And so by commemorating Ashura every year and grieving it, we do get closer to Allah. We also keep the spirit of our moms alive um, and refresh and renew um, the importance of following the teachings of Alvade. I've, I've made the decision to go into this different culture, to you know, integrate myself into this different group of people. It's my responsibility to make sure that I'm educating myself and understanding what's going on. Um, and it's the same way that as, you know, as we in Canada have a vastly wonderful immigrant population, that they had to do the same thing. They had to learn it. And so I think maybe having the right attitude about it and being open to learning um, helps because the sisters, you know, they help when they can. And I would never want them to feel like they should have done more for me because honestly, they, they do so much. They do probably too much than they should. <laughs>